The following podcast contains some bad language and themes of a birthday party nature. Listener discretion is probably advised. I don't know. Hello and welcome to That Was The Week That Was Was It, the podcast where we sit a guest down and we just ask them how their week was last week. It's that simple. I'm Alex Sivright and joining me is my friend and shoulder to cry on, Kate O'Connor. Kate, how are you this week? Oh, Alex. Alex, Alex, Alex. Yep. I am well. How are you? I'm grand. Yes, I'm grand. Yeah. I suppose. I'm, you know, it's the, the weather's been all over the place today. It's been an absolute disaster. I looked up from my desk at about three o'clock this afternoon and I, honest to God, thought it was the end of the world. The sky turned completely black, thought there was going to be a plague of locusts, but no, so far just rain. Two days with thunder, isn't it? And lightning. And we had hail yesterday and all sorts. What is going on? It's May. This is not on. (sighs) I don't know. We need to write a strongly worded letter to someone. I'm going to. Uh, And joining us this week is an actor who has appeared in Adult Swim's Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell and also the iconic Too Many Cooks and he's also made Kevin Hart explode in Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle and he's also in the upcoming US version of This Country for Fox. It's William Tokarski. How are you, William? Hooray! I am lovely. You are lovely. (laughs) I am lovely. You seem genuinely lovely. Genuinely lovely. Um, now, I, usually at this point, I say we've met before, but we actually haven't met before. Oh yes, we, we did. Going... Oh, did... Alex, this is did so we? awkward. Oh, when was oh, that? When was yes. that? When was that? Sorry. Well, it was it was a few years ago on that music video we did for Don Bracco. You're right. Ah, uh, you were the one that got me booked on that. Um, everybody, wow. this is just typical of you, Alex. I, I always forget the little people. That's where I met Kate. She was my partner. She's the one that shot me when I couldn't do that silly dance that you choreographed. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I'm so sorry. Do you know what? I, I got you confused with that other guy. The other Tokarski? Yes. Yeah, the other Bill Tokarski, unfortunately. Yeah, because is he related to you? Um. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he is. He is my alter ego. If you if you want to see him, you just Google the words "creepy Uncle Bill." It's my uncle. Creepy Uncle <laughs> Bill. Actually, I think I've seen him pop up on YouTube. Um, yes, I have actually. I remember that vividly. Vividly, he does look a lot like you. Um, it's great to have you here. I mean, I was because I I forgot the music video because it didn't really have a huge impact on me because the the, the tune was not one of his best. Ah. What? I didn't like it. I mean, it. you 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 were just one of the backing dancers, so I'm not sure it's your place to, you know, judge the music necessarily. I mean, this this is why I don't work there anymore. With, you know, with these people, no. I was so judgmental. There was so many music videos where I'm just sat at the back, just with my arms folded, going, "Nope, not listening to this." Um, <laughs> it hit number one in the UK, so I'm, I'm going to have uh, to I'm going to have yeah. to disagree. Well, I did a number two while watching it. Ah. Um, well, I've got you here. Uh, there's a question I've been meaning to ask you, uh, Bill. Do you mind if I call you Bill? You may call me Bill. My friends call me Bill. My Good. my oh. my fans they call me the killer, and my oh. my hardcore fans they get confused and they call me Creepy Uncle Bill. <laughs> and what does your wife call you? Um, I, 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 what's the rating on this show? Oh, you can say whatever you whatever want. Whatever you want it to be. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a very similar nickname to you. My wife calls me a very similar thing. Well, I keep, <laughs> I keep telling her I am not an asshole. I am a hemorrhoid. Hemorrhoids, yeah. <laughs> hemorrhoids annoy assholes. <laughs> Yes, Excellent. that's the one. You just pop out and make your presence known. Amen. Um, amen. I've been meaning to ask you, actually. Um, it's a question. You must get this all the time, as soon as I've got you here. Um, do you still get the Too Many Cooks theme music stuck in your head? Oh, my God, yes. Now Thank you for asking. Now it's stuck. Now it's stuck. It's, You've said it. Uh, it's going to be there for the rest of the day. 
Oh, why what don't you a do curse. this, Alex? What a curse. I've had it in my head all day already. <laughs> <laughs> and now you've just doubled down. You know, that song wasn't written till six months after we filmed. So we never actually were, were was a part of it. Only when it came out did we get um, aligned with the music. Oh, oh wow. wow. I actually have a collector's item. They pressed vinyl. Um, at some German pressing company, they pressed a vinyl recording of it. And it's, I've got it for my great grandson. I'm going to give it to him so he can sell it on eBay in about 80 years. Wow. Brilliant. Wow. What, what's, on, what's on the B side? I think it's the same on both sides. Well, it'd have uh, to be, wouldn't I've, it? Really? I've actually only played the one side. <laughs> Once. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Once is all you need. Once is all you That's need it. of that tune. Yes. William, the reason you're here is to talk to us about your week last week. So how was it in general? Well, this is the week that was, right? Was it? It is. So where where the hell is David Frost? I signed on to talk to David Frost. <laughs> uh, I mean, I saw that show back in the... In, well, I didn't see the early version that you guys had in the UK, but like we always do, we take a show that you do and run it for about 10 years in, in, in the States. So where's David Frost? Well, Alex has ideas above his station, to be honest with you, William. So he likes to, you know, equate himself to David Frost in yeah. terms of like sheer charisma. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, All if right. you listen to the first pilot episode we did of this i do start the show by going hello good evening and welcome but nobody <sighs> was interested in that and i thought and well, also they confused him with bruce forsyth hello, who's quite a different <laughs> character um but uh so yeah i'm not david frost obviously and that's why i've added a was it at the end but it is incredibly difficult to google this podcast uh, which is a, a mistake <laughs> I found. Um, so, how was Monday? Monday was monotonous. I am an old man, retired on an old age pension, that got bored and started looking for things to do. Hmm. Uh, so, my days can either be boring as hell, right, or all of a sudden someone taps me on the shoulder and says, "Hey, we got your little." video program whatever for you to do and then then it's all crazy and last minute but monday was a boring day not a whole lot went on but tuesday went nuts i had two two auditions the very next day oh for anything interesting can you tell us yeah can, uh, you can tell i us? tell you can i tell you um to be quite honest with you, I forget what they are because they run into each other. But uh, it was a couple of uh, TV shows that were uh, in production. That'll do. <laughs> uh, I actually did like, like uh, uh, in the last month, I did like 10 auditions and didn't book a one of them. Hmm. But then I get a call from my agent and says, do you have an updated reel? I says, why is that? She says one of the casting directors, want, I submitted a headshot for something, and he wants to see your reel. And I booked it, and I'm going to work it tomorrow. Nice. Great. It's it's a Walt Disney, um, I can safely say it's a comedic horror story based on a graphic novel. Wow. Oh wow! So, yeah. Okay. It ought to be it ought to be fun. A comic book in, for the rest of us old folks. You young kids call it a graphic novel. Well, I, mean, I, I call it a comic book as well. I'm I'm older than I appear. Ah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm I'm older up here in my head, and also in the rest of me as well. So once you book something, the craziness starts. You can't get near anybody until you pass a COVID test. Of course. Oh yeah. So I got to drive sixty miles to go take a COVID test come back the next day and do a fitting and while i'm at the fitting let's do another covid test so oh, lovely yeah it's 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 exciting it's 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 interesting so you've had a lot of things up your nose then yes yes um most of it most of it is up the nose um um i i saw 
No, I drove I drove to the place and at, at the front street had nothing and there was a sign that said COVID testing in the rear and I got nervous. <laughs> but the door was in the back and I didn't have any problem at all with it. Well, and I I passed. I passed. Well, well that's good. That's good. That's good to hear. What what a way to spend your you know your your retirement days by working so much and you know doing such exciting things. It's great. Well, it's not that I work that much. It's just I spend a lot of time doing shameless self-promotion, and people think I work a lot. Well, that's hard work in itself. I mean, I've been yes. trying to trying to run this podcast, and it's been oh, it's been a chore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, generally, generally, my my days would run one into another where I could never figure out that what they were. It used to be I'd go to church on Sundays, and that would be the marker. Now with with the the plague, it's like you know we're not going to meet in person for a while. No, although we're starting back, we're starting back. Yeah, I mean all the days merged into one for me. I mean I actually completely forgot Mother's Day. Um, my mum basically rang me the day before and said, "Have you forgotten?" And I was like, "I didn't even know it was Saturday today. I had no idea. I was that far behind. Absolutely no idea what's going on. It's it's hard." But, it gets uh, worse when you get older. I've heard. <laughs> I forgot an anniversary. Oh dear. Ooh. And I and I have been married over fifty years. Wow. Well, that yes. I you know I, I, as proportion of all of the anniversaries, that's not too bad. You know, okay. one one out of fifty. And and in all those fifty years, my wife and I never once considered divorce. No. Murder many times, but <laughs> never divorce. How's the weather been over there? Oh, it's been hellish. Yeah, actual hell, like a special circle of hell Oh, is the British weather. Yesterday we had every single different type of weather I think you think of. We had sun, very sunny in the morning. Then we had thunder and then it hailed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, apart from snow, that that was it. I mean, he didn't need that. We had the hail. There were cats so. and dogs. Yep, it was horrible, yeah. absolutely well, awful. Well, here it has just rained steadily for the last few days. My wife stood there and 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 stared through the window at the rain. I I I, I stared through the window. I I I finally got sorry for her and let her come in, but. It was <laughs> it was one of those wet days. Yeah, I know we know them very well here. <laughs> them very Indeed. well. William, t tell me if you are auditioning for a role based on a graphic novel, does that mean they supply you your lines in little bubbles that sit in different squares on the piece of paper? I don't know because the audition for the for a graphic novel that I've had, I had no lines. Oh, oh. okay. So did did they get you? Did they get you to stand with like a big white border around you, like you're in a comic book, so that they could visualize you? I will do that next time. Since COVID, all auditions in the states now. Are done on tape, where you set your little oh. you set your little phone up in front of your sheet draped on the back of the wall, and you tape your audition. Now, I uh. I personally use a young lady that I was associated with early who runs a taping service. She's got a little building behind, like a garage that she turned into a soundproof room with a backdrop, and and the neat thing is, and, and you know that I'm 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 slow as far as technology goes and she's fast she's a fast woman brilliant so for for uh for uh a, <laughs> Not in that a way, small just... amount of money i pay her to take my auditions i drive up and she says hello and i will do my audition and she will do her magic on the keyboard and it'll go off and then every once in a while i'll get a response back but everything's taped now everything is taped uh, I, I think it, it'll probably, I imagine it's going to stay like that for a bit as well, because it, it seems easier. Well, yes, it is. Actually, uh, the, the, the people, uh, I'm in Atlanta, which is a bastard child of the film and TV industry. 
mm. the the state here come up with some tax incentives that said if you come film here we will uh, rebate part of your taxes now initially it sounds like well yeah no big deal but like Paramount Studios, their budget for this tax rebate is $100 million. Whoa. So there is a lot of difference in money in filming here. So about the time that I retired, that's when they started this program and productions came here with the idea that they're going to do it on the cheap and that use us dumb rednecks and we wouldn't know what the hell we're doing anyway. But as time went on, we developed some infrastructure and some expertise and some people that seem to know what they're doing. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun place. And we developed the tape uh, uh, audition. Live auditions, when I first started, which uh, 2014, were rare. I mean, it's like, uh, uh, although I did a live audition for Jumanji, but um, ah. other than that, I I have a, I usually book off of a tape. But at any rate, tape auditions are the standard, and the people here in Atlanta are teaching the people in New York and L.A. how to do it. So, and they don't like that. <laughs> they don't like that at all. Uh, are New York and L.A. <laughs> listening though? That's the thing. Well, do they? Uh, how far does your podcast go? Well, oh, we've got New York, you, LA, you, Paris, Tokyo, you name it. Cool. That's shooting in. Well, then then it, it but it's it's mainly uh it's mainly like uh Northern England. But yeah, um it's <laughs> But no, we do get a few American listens and a few Canadian listens as well. Mm. Even some Australian listens, ah. which I was quite amazed with. Yeah. It's very uh it's very interesting. It just needs to pick up momentum now. We're still, you know, we're four episodes deep and we just need to build I, up some steam i have some friends in the uk hmm. i have some friends so do i um so my so my wednesday was very exciting as you said earlier i'm on a uh, tv show that is a remake of this country the bbc hit on what bbc3 Yep. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for this. I'm so excited. Love the original. Love it. Can't wait to see what you guys do Who with it. Who am I playing? I don't know. This is what I've been trying to work out. I'm playing Len, the, crum the dim-witted curmudgeon with a slight drinking problem. Uah, uh, well... <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to make that assumption, William, you see. My wife says, well, you asshole, you don't have to act. I says, yeah. <laughs> Money for nothing. Yeah. It has a new title. Oh, okay. The title is Welcome to Flatch. Flatch. Ah. The name of the city that they are are supposedly living in is Flatch in the state of Ohio. Now, if you uh, if you look up Flatch in uh, in the Urban Dictionary, there is no city that really by that name. If you look right. up Flatch in the Urban Dictionary, it says it's that watery poo when you make a fart. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Yes, I mean, it literally uh, is that. Yes, and that I know it. that has to be Paul Fegg. Who is the, the one of the executive producers and directed the first few episodes? Um, and actually, actually, he's over in the UK right now uh, in Belfast uh, filming uh, the School of Good and Evil. Ah, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I've literally just looked it up on Urban Dictionary. Yes, the process in which bits of watery poo sprays from oh, the anus oh. during the farting process. There you go. Okay. It is also used to describe the flapping of the butt cheeks in this process. What a lovely thing to, to be associated well, it, this, with. William. This show is full of Easter eggs, starting with the damn title. Yeah. I don't think anything associated with Flatch comes out like an Easter egg, William, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not by the sounds of that descriptor. Wednesday, I had to do what they call ADR looping. Are you familiar with that? Ah. 
I am familiar with that, yes. I am not. You'll have to explain for us plebs, I'm afraid. If I'm recording some dialogue and someone drops a book in the background and makes a funny noise or, or something like that, they want to re-record it where I stand in front of a microphone, I look at a screen with that scene, and I get a little warning bar, and I get beeps in my ear, beep, 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 when I get down to where I have to repeat the words and slip sync what I'm saying on screen to nice, clear dialogue. Oh, I see. So you're essentially dubbing it to get right. rid of mistakes. Yes, right. yeah, you're dubbing Got it to it. get rid of mistakes. I, I I got to say son of a bitch, and uh, I had to laugh, and I had to to uh, chuckle, and I had to argue. Uh, one one scene was an argument I was having in the background where they had no microphone. What they, what they'll do is they'll they'll play it low on when they actually show the scene. I'm I'm just somebody in the background arguing with another person. But it was fun. It was interesting. I got to go to a studio. Of course, I tested first for COVID. Then I got to go to a studio, and I get paid nicely for doing that. Excellent. That's good. No, that's good. That's good. I I had to do a similar sort of thing for a very not in a studio. It was it was for a virtual cabaret. It was in a garage, wasn't well, it? Well, essentially, yes. It was for a uh, virtual cabaret that a, um, a theatre group that I sometimes associate with in the past they were doing, and I was doing a scene from Little Shop of Horrors ah. as Seymour, and um, I had to like redub my lines over the top. Now I had no guide or anything like that, so it's pretty bl- bloody obvious that I'm not mm-hmm. saying those lines at that point. Um, and so I hats off to anyone. I know in a studio, you know, atmosphere is very different, but I've never actually had to do professional ADR myself. So hats off to anyone that can actually do it first time. That's they make it easy. They they make it easy Good. for you. Yeah, I could have done with that. I could have done with that. And and they do multiple takes, and you know, you'll like raise your volume or change your emphasis. You know, those sort of things. And someone in it, it's really weird. Someone in LA is directing me to what they want while I'm filming in a studio in Atlanta. Hmm. Wow. My my first go around at ADR was with the film Irresistible, John Stewart's film. I had a nice little part in that, and they just decided to add some dialogue where I had my back turned, you know, where I was hmm. speaking to someone. So yeah, that was easy because there was nothing mm-hmm. to lip sync. But no, it, of course, yes, yes, it's fun. It's fun. So are are Kerry and Curtin still called Kerry and Curtin? In in the in your in Welcome to Flash. Okay, um, there, there's a slight uh, Welcome to uh, uh, to Flatch is made some slight changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a British comedy is subtle and requires some intelligence to fully comprehend and understand it. Yeah, I mean, just listen to this podcast. Where <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whereas American comedy, they know there's Trump voters that are watching it, so they gotta make this shit obvious to them. So <laughs> okay, they all think it's a documentary, though. They well, slap they, really... you, they slap you in the face with the comedy. Um, wow. uh, uh, Sam Straley will be playing the young man, uh, uh, and uh, Chelsea Holmes will be playing the girl. And they are relative unknowns who have not really have a large following. They're, they're, uh, but they are good. They are uh, improvers. They are uh, fast, quick. And they've got good memories. They they do well. Mm. I am. They they will be some rising stars coming out of it. The two leads. They're number one and number two on the call yeah. sheet. It's um. Is Sean William Scott in that? One? Yes, Sean. Sh- is he? Sean won a hell of, hell of a nice guy. Hell of a nice guy. Mm. Sean is playing the vicar. Oh, no way! <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> He's playing an a a a a a. a, a, a a Unitarian priest, a very loose religion, that uh, yeah. they moved him from the frozen tundra 
to this city, and he basically looks after these two young folks. Now, they've added another character. They've added Cheryl, which is the priest's love interest. This is played by Aya Cash, who's probably the best actor on the show. She's really good. I'm an old man. I don't hear real well. I did a scene where I'm waiting for a cue from her, and uh, I missed it. I didn't hear it. It was on a busy street. And rather than, you know, cause them to redo it, she says, hey, Lynn, how you doing? You know, and, you know so now I've got my cue and I better start saying my lines to her. <laughs> but, uh, you better stop uh, being curmudgeonly sharpish. Yes. So the priest drops her and breaks up with her. So she's left in this little city by herself. Oh, nice. And she becomes the editor of the local newspaper. Interesting. So it's a fun character. Uh, the other characters are there, Mandy and and uh, uh, the other ones. I have I have not watched the British version. No. Mainly because uh. I didn't want to. I just wanted to do what I'm going to do with with the character yeah. and with yeah. the dialogue. Um, I plan on watching it after after a while. See how it turns out. Yeah. Uh, when, when you film stuff, you don't know what will survive the editor. Things that I like, things that I, you know, thought was terrific, they may not like. So I, I sort of like don't describe it a whole lot until I'm done. I'm very much looking forward to seeing it. I can't wait. I'm very excited. It's funny. It's slap you in the face funny. Good, good. I'm really glad to hear that. <laughs> Cause the uh, the British version really speaks to me because I, I where I didn't grow up in um, the southwest of England, which is where it's set. I did grow up in a very rural part of the country, so there are elements of it that are just so familiar to me. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the same humour, but in a completely different setting, dialed up to eleven. I think part of the draw of the show, both the English and the, the remake is the fact that it has a broad audience. There are young people yeah. involved. There are old people involved. There is old humor. There is new humor. You know, it's, it's, it's quite, quite a bit, bit of fun, you know. And here's the neat thing, okay? They're willing to adapt on the go. That is good. There's a, there's a scene where, um, the young male lead, uh, uh, what's his name in England? Um, Curtin. Yeah, where he gets caught doing graffiti. So the priest decides to put him into an art class to better utilize his talents. And um, the first thing they're doing is drawing a nude. Do I need to go any further? <laughs> a nude model? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're with you, with you no. so far, yeah. <laughs> we, we got you. Lynn is there, but Lynn is there just to get some of the wine and hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> and someone is interviewed, and like all documentaries, they interview people, and they interview the, a lady, and she says, oh, Lynn's just here to, and the only thing he's drawn is attention to his drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, that's what, what the, the, when we did the table read for the show, that's what they did. I'm doing a Zoom table read with, with people all over the country, and I just added the line, and I says, the only drinking problem I have is when I can't get a drink. Nice. They, nice. Add, they added it to the show. Awesome. Lovely. Oh, writing yeah, credit great. right there. Yeah, well, Love it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, that's not the reason. It's, it's actually a line from an old blues song. I'm I'm a, oh. I'm, a oh. I'm a blues fan, but at any rate, it, it nice. just seemed appropriate. And as you can tell, I do blurt out things occasionally that I think are humorous. You know, I was the class clown in school, so well, it served you well. Good. <sighs> yes, yes. Hopefully, it has. Yeah, ho well, yeah. <clears throat> you know, you didn't invite me here for my comedy, okay? I. I I booked the jobs that I booked that you invited me for 
because I made friends with the directors and the writers with my comedy. Yeah. So I finally yeah. booked something where I can be funny. And I really, I really <laughs> like that. It's it's all a stepping stone, isn't it? You go from one thing to another, and it, you can all. It's nice when you can trace it back as to how you got to this point. Yes. And um, yeah, humor and you know being being good and nice goes a long way, I find. So yeah, fair play to you, fair play to you. And uh, this can only lead to bigger things. I hope this is. I really do hope this is as successful as The Office, and it goes on for just like series and series mm-hmm. and just. Because the office didn't really outstay its welcome. I mean, the the, the British one ended after what was it two series? Wasn't two or three it? years, two, three, like just yeah. like just like yeah. David Frost show, two or three years, and then they run it ten yes. ten years in the states. The office, two or three yep. years, then run it ten years in the states. Yeah, so it's a good sign, isn't it? <laughs> it's a good sign. I could be an eighty-three year old man doing that show. And why yeah, not swearing and swearing and drinking and <laughs> being a curmudgeon? The neat thing is, <laughs> is they have me walking with a cane in one scene. So, Hale, if that happens, I'm already set. I can just fall right into it. Spot on, <laughs> spot on. Right, so let's move on to the next feature, which is this feature's theme music was produced after the recording of this podcast. So let's have a listen. One, two, three, four. Here we go. What did you think? Wow, you've really outdone yourself, Alex. I try. <laughs> what was your favourite part? Well, I, I like that you went for something bluesy because you knew that William would be here. <laughs> so that was a nice touch. Yeah. I thought that was sophisticated. It was, you know... <laughs> sets a scene, doesn't it? Yeah. It sets a scene. Yes. Yeah. I like I like the guitar rift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You didn't think that was too obnoxious? No, no, no. no. No, it's... no, it was prominent, but it wasn't uncouth. No, no. No. And you couldn't tell that the guitarist's trousers were falling down constantly, so we had to keep stopping slightly to pick them up. Well, it was the grunting that gave that away, really. There was a slight grunt, wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and was there anything you didn't like? It wasn't long enough. No, yeah. it was very short. It's a good shout. It was a very short mm. one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure that I necessarily think that the theme tune to um, Sesame Street lends itself brilliantly to the blues, but... I thought it gelled quite well. Fair enough. It, it's, subje- it's art. It's subjective. It was art with a capital F. Yes. Yes. Right, well, thank you so much for the input. Um, Thursday, we're on to now. Mm. Uh, Bill... Thursday. Thursday. I had a doctor's visit on Thursday. Ah, okay. And, now we're yeah, talking. And everybody's everybody's getting vaccinations now. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm 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 fully vaccinated. Oh, congratulations. Actually, last week I I got my second shot, and I was going to try to get a third shot, but the damn bartender threw me out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I've had the first shot. Ah, that's, that's all I've had. Which one? Yeah. Uh, AstraZeneca. Ah, I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> so I made that sound like a like, like a spell. Uh, AstraZeneca. <laughs> like a Harry Potter spell. It was quite yeah, like exotic. But I'm glad though because I can't pronounce Pfizer. Yeah. So that's that's fine. I'm getting Pfizer next week. You're getting Pfizer. Yeah, I'm getting Pfizer. Pfizer right up next week. Did you uh, did you have any side effects, Bill? Um, I I was actually filming up in uh, North Carolina, probably seven hours from where I live, 
when um, uh, it was made available to me up there. And fortunately, I had the weekend off. There was no shooting. So uh, you couldn't tell the difference between me being drunk on the weekend or recovering from <laughs> from uh, uh, COVID. Uh, no, that's good. That's good. That's good. I uh, I woke up at three in the morning um, shivering so badly oh, when no. I had mine. And I couldn't get back to sleep again till half four in the afternoon. Mm. Um, and that my lymph nodes are very swollen and they have been f since i've had it and uh that's about it that's about as far as i've gone so i'm really looking forward to the second one uh if my <laughs> you know, I, i've <clears throat> just this is i mean i i'm veering a little off topic here but just to go back to something you just said william um you live in atlanta right correct and you said you went to South Carolina, and that was seven hours away driving. North Carolina, but yes. North Carolina. Yes. Okay, so my North American geography is quite poor, but I'm looking at a map of it now, and that has just, like, on the map, they really don't look that far away from each other. And so it's just hammered home to me just how absolutely monumentally huge the United States is. And it's, it is. it's blown it my is. mind. It is. Um, uh, uh, basically, I filmed this um, um, Welcome to Flatch, the American version of this country, in Wilmington, North Carolina, right on the coast. Okay. Yeah, I see that. I see it. It's 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 north of Myrtle Beach, Alex. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. Yeah. I, well, I had a, a holiday in um, we in Colorado. We drove all the way up through to the you know. Uh, to the Rocky Mountains and the the Black Hills and all that, so yeah, I, I'm I'm aware of how huge and vast the US is. It's it's, it's crazy. I went it's to massive. New Orleans a couple of years ago, which was an incredible place, and I didn't get to go for all that long because I was there for work. So I was there for like two days, and I was in my head, I was like, "That's not far from Atlanta. I I know where William is. It's really far from Atlanta." Yeah. This is really it's about eight hours. I mean, you can drive pretty much anywhere to anywhere in the UK in eight yeah, hours. We, I think England would fit in Florida. I'm pretty sure wow. that's the case. That's wild, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. Anyway, time. this is very off topic, but thank you for <laughs> indulging me. <laughs> but you have a quality dense pack. I beg your pardon. Quality dense pack. <laughs> In other words, you got a lot of Thank good. You. you got a lot of good shit in a tight little area. Oh, I see. I thought you were complimenting my teeth. I didn't understand. <laughs> no, it's, it sounds like he was complimenting something else, Kate. To be honest with you. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> but now, see, you do have some wide open spaces in in the UK. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, oh, we yeah, we're do. very proud of them. Very proud of them. Uh, the, the rolling hills. It's where we keep the... we keep our lakes and our peaks. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And some nuclear power plants. Yes. Yes. Um, one of the things that my wife and I plan on doing when COVID's all over is to visit Ireland. She oh. claims Irish Irish heritage. So That's I nice. don't know exactly what, but... I do too. So well, your congratulations. Wife, thank you. Your wife and I have, have that in common. Um, my parents are Irish, so I spent a lot of time over there as a child. It's a great place. You'll love it. I tell her the only thing Irish about her is the Smittix she drinks. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true of quite a lot of us, to be fair. <laughs> here in the States, they call it Smithwicks. No. Yes. How do you guys get away with bastardizing so much stuff? <laughs> in the, the corner liquor store, you go and ask for Smittix. They, they, we don't have any. And you look and there's Smittix up there on the, on the, in the cooler. Does that mean that you go in and ask for a few cans of Gynaise while you're at it? Uh, I, well, I, I don't care for that one too much. But it's, no, fair enough. I drink, I drink cheap beer. When I was a young man, I started drinking the cheapest thing you could get. would buy it by the court and put it under the seat. As we're driving around, <laughs> but so so you know all these craft beers. Mm. You know, I drink crap beer. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I think on a summer's day you can't go far wrong with a Bud Light. There you go. And, and I'll stand by mm. that. 
I don't, I don't yeah. care yeah. if you're a craft beer drinker. <laughs> I do like Bud Light, although I prefer Miller Light. Fair enough. Um, there's a there's a small brew a uh, small brewery where I was raised as a child in uh, Pennsylvania. I'm originally from the Pittsburgh area of Pennsylvania. And it's um, called a Latrobe Brewery, and they made a beer called Rolling Rock. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know. And yep. Yes. It's a great little old cheap beer. And what's occurred is, just like anything else, the big mega corporation bought it out. It's made in New Jersey in some big factory now, but it tastes the same. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. But that's what I started, you know, as as a young man. Yeah. And I'm I'm an old man now. I'm 73 years old. So I've been around the block once or twice. I mean, I I don't drink anymore, um, and I don't drink anymore either. But then I don't drink any less. <laughs> yes. No, seriously though. Sometimes one time I did give up drinking for good, and I ended up drinking for evil. So it's just you know you just have no idea how to uh, how to deal with yeah. it. Yeah. The, the the reason I stopped drinking was because I realized that I don't actually like the taste of alcohol. Um, and I've been like through my teens and through my twenties, I've just been faking it, my enjoyment of alcohol and just came to a point where I was like, uh-huh. I don't know why I'm doing this. Cause I'm not really getting any benefit from this. And I just feel, you know, worse the next day. And as you get older, hangovers do get a lot, lot worse. Um, I've never, never had a hangover. That's what the vac. That's what the the side effects of the vaccine was. Um, it, it felt, it felt like a hangover. Ah. It felt like the worst hangover I have ever had in my ah. life. Um, well, just think though, when you have a few drinks and maybe you're, you, you know, you go a little bit too far. You, they say, um, today's happiness is r- robbing from tomorrow, right? Yeah, sort of like so that. So it's the same with the vaccine. You've had it's really, really good that you've had the vaccine. Yeah. So you can't have it for free. You've got to give up a bit of yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Pain is beauty, and it. so yeah. is ongoing yeah. physical health. Yeah. It reminded me of the time the worst hangover I ever had was I had to work that day. Uh, it was a it was a work to do the night before, and for some reason they thought it was a good idea to give us shots of ouzo. Oh no! Ooh, so... I know, right? And I was, I had about five and I felt, you know, drunk. And the, the next morning I was like, I'm really, really thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I need a glass of water. And apparently you're not supposed to do that with Uzo. You're not supposed to drink water after that. Oh yeah. It's the same as Perno, isn't it? Mm, I didn't realise that. Oh. And I had to go to work, you know, with the shakes and being sick and just feeling like I would rather be dead than working and it was in retail you know and that's just the worst Mm. retail's the worst well i have a physician a doctor um she was doctoring me for my kidneys told me to drink at least one light beer a day oh so i yeah it's supposed to be good you were prescribed it yes it's supposed to be good for your kidneys it flushes them out you know so that First beer I have is for medicinal purposes every day. The other three are for my witty comebacks and my flawless dance yep. moves. Excellent, <laughs> you know, excellent. And you you can never be too careful, can you, Bill? Nope. You you, you better better overdoing it than you know underselling it. You don't want your kidneys to be like, well, that was nothing. Yes, absolutely. And you've got two kidneys, so that's at least two pints. Yes. What about Friday? Oh. How was Friday? Friday was a di- dental cleaning, and the um, dentist seated seated a crown. Um, oh, had a temporary on uh. for all my filming. What was it was really weird. I mean, it's like I make a dentist appointment and I would be filming, so I'd have to put it off. I, the way it worked for me is I would drive up and work. Uh, the the, the uh, I worked twelve of the fourteen episodes on the show. And oh, nice. they break them up into six blocks, and it's easier two or three episodes. So what you'll do is you'll go work for two weeks and then go home for a week or two. Uh, uh, some of the actors out of state, they just stayed up there in a hotel, or, and the leads, they actually rented uh, uh, condos for them while they were up there. But, Not too shabby. Yeah, so... Um, there, if if you're really sharp-eyed, you can tell the difference between season one and season two when there is a season two. I will have my new crown on, 
<laughs> yeah. I... And shinier, well-cleaned teeth, presumably. Yes, 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 yes. At my age, it's important to have teeth, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I've neglected my teeth, and I feel I feel really bad about that. I've got a phobia of dentists. Quite a big phobia of dentists, and um, yeah, I need to go, and I'm dreading it so badly. I have a couple of drinks first. <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, well, might work. Might work. Yeah, just smoke a joint. Yeah, just, just knock me out. So everything was fine with your teeth. You yes, know? yes, yeah. Got the crown sorted. I've purchased a lot of new teeth over the last few years. I've gone into the implant business. Ah. Which, you know, it's it's okay. It's 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 good. Yeah. Just Well, it's a it's a marvel of modern medicine yes. really, isn't it? Like gone gone are the days when we'd all be, you know, gap toothed gummy by the age of fifty five. Mm-hmm. Well, you, do you know about the um, the cleansing thing they called it, um, where on your eighteenth birthday, I don't know if it's a thing in America, oh, on your eighteenth no. on your eighteenth birthday yeah. in the UK, they used to, yeah, um, as a present, have that person's teeth removed completely and fake teeth given in, mm-hmm. so they wouldn't have any issues in later years. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. And 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 I yeah. was thinking about it. I was like, God, I wish I'd had that because I just I'd, I'd be used to it by now, you know. Um, you know, forty two years old now, and I'd be like, Oh, that was ages ago. It'd be fine, you know. Um, but you can, you continue to grow, and you're going to have to change them. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Also, William, you're under an awful lot more pressure with your teeth than we are with ours because we, as British people have accepted that the world knows that we have terrible teeth. So yeah. we're we're much less it, self-conscious about it. Whereas you guys, I know it's a stereotype, but American teeth are genuinely oh, sorry. incredible. How Kate, do you do Kate, it? You know, How, with all your health insurance... Kate, you know that's on. a stereotype. American have good teeth. What? <laughs> no, I said, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know so, it's so a stereotype, the British having bad teeth, but it's I mean, true. To be honest. Well, that's also true. There's no smoke without fire, Alex. Let's just... <laughs> we are where we are that's on true. the dental front. I don't understand how in a country where everybody struggles with health insurance <laughs> that they're spending all of that money on having bloody yeah. excellent teeth. Like, why? I don't... I mean, I do understand. They look fabulous. But it, it it's wild to me. I'm, I'm quite fortunate. I have actual dental insurance in my retirement so oh, that is good. Oh, that's yeah. brilliant. I yeah. I spent almost thirty years working for General Motors, the manufacturers of automobiles in this country, oh. and you will never guess what I did for a living. Oh, uh, can we guess though? Um, yeah. <laughs> did you? Were you a designer of some sort? No, nope, I worked no. in an assembly plant. In an assembly plant. Okay. Did you make? Um, the uh, the handles that you use to roll down the windows. They don't exist anymore. They all push button windows. Now. Yeah, but when you were doing it, what? <laughs> 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 um, did you uh spray the windows so that it was more difficult to see in from the outside, but you could see perfectly clearly from the inside out? Nope. Hmm. Am I close? <laughs> Not <laughs> nowhere some, near. to do with cars? <laughs> nowhere near. Okay. Uh... Engines. Engines. Something to do with engines. Let me just Google you. So I can... <laughs> no, you won't see. Um, as you well know, that uh, uh, automobiles today are mostly built with robots. Correct? You were a robot. Oh, my God. Uh, close. You're very close. I would teach people how to program and maintain robots. Oh, wow. wow. I, I was an electrician by trade and good at it. So it was a remote plant away from Detroit where most of the uh, General Motors things are. So what they would do is they'd find a couple of electricians that know how to bullshit. <sighs> they would send them to school to learn how to teach adults and then send them to the technical schools and then you'd recreate a lab and like i had like 300 electricians you know originally i was an electrician by trade but that's the 
that's the lump I fell into. It's like, it's like when I retired, I got into the acting business because they were filming a lovely little movie in the town where I live. The movie is called Get Low. It's a great little film, never got distribution. It's got Robert Duvall, Bill Murray. Wow. It's a story about a hermit who throws his own funeral, basically oh, wow. in a nutshell. So I walked down to be a looky-loo just like everybody else to see Bill Murray and and Duval and you know the van pulls up they're in and out you don't see anybody but I saw people that were working as extras the camera was shooting out a screen door and there were people walking up and down the street and they were extras and I talked to a guy and he says yeah it's easy to do I says well, hell, that, they feed you too. He says, yeah. <laughs> so I says, hell, that sounds like fun. So I started doing it. I did it about six months before I found out that the people that said something got paid a whole lot more. Wow. So I says, let me see if I can do that. <laughs> well, I did the same thing at General Motors. Rather than fix the robots, I learned how to teach other people how to fix <laughs> the robots. It didn't pay anymore, but the job was a little easier. Wow. So what you're saying, William, if, I, if I'm reading between the lines correctly here, is that when Armageddon comes, when yes. the robot uprising finally happens, we really need you on side to, you know, either talk them down or disarm them or whatever <laughs> it is you do with robots, because you have insider knowledge. I'll teach you how to turn the ON switch to the OFF position. The, uh, uh, the ON switch to the OFF switch. Okay, I'm going to make a note of that. ON slash OFF. Well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm making a note. Okay, I'm writing okay. it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All you got to uh, do is turn them off. And, and switch it to off, you say. Yes. Right. Okay. To OFF. Got it, got it, got it, got yes. it. I see. All right. That works. All right, cool. Simple. Thank you. Excellent You're trade welcome. secrets. Lovely. Lovely. Um, so, the weekend. Ah, the weekend was party time. Good. Woo! Good. Party time. My oldest grandchild, I was been a good grandfather to her for years. Well, she did something for me that I really appreciate. She made me a great grandfather. Oh, that's oh, so fantastic. nice. Congratulations. I have a one year old great grandson, Elliot, named after Pete's Dragon. Oh. And we had his birthday party. Oh, oh that's lovely. lovely. That is party time. We had the cake and the icing. Um, I have a nice outside backyard with a deck the weather was terrific we and we just had everybody over and and a little, little fire when it got dark and you know that sort of thing that and sounds drank beautiful. some cheap cheap beer <laughs> that sounds great what that a brilliant wonderful. party yeah yes very i'm actually very jealous of that i <laughs> really <Yeah. laughs> it's just so wholesome and lovely <laughs> yeah well, I'm not really that wholesome. I'm a creepy old man. Don't don't let it spread around, creepy or they won't book Uncle me anymore. Bill. <laughs> yes. Have you Googled it? Not yet. Uh, I'm scared to, uh, to be I'm, honest I'm, with I'm you, William. I'm still on Flatch. Uh, so give me a second. <laughs> yes. Your browsing history is going to need a good scrub after this, Alex. Well, it did anyway. Uh, creepy <laughs> Uncle Bill. Oh, there we go. Again, I use shameless self-promotion. No, but it works. Yes. Oh, Elliot's a lot of fun. I mean, he's you know he's um, uh, he's a bright young little boy who's just starting to walk, and that's oh. that's fun. That's fun. Uh, that's that's the greatest time in it when you got to run after them. <laughs> has he started speaking much, William? He knows Nana. He he's oh. into Nana. Great. Um, and asshole. <laughs> Uh, very good. No, I don't think we've taught him that yet. Uh, and his mom, oh, oh your, your wife will. Your wife I, will, I'm sure. I, I have no problem with that. I have no problem. Just as long as they call me in time for dinner, I don't care what they call me. That's the point. That's the point. But yeah, Fantastic. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you go oh. to my Facebook page, you'll see a picture of him there somewhere. 
I will, I will have a look. Uh, yes. We've been friends on Facebook for quite some time, actually. I like, um, I like Facebook. It's good, isn't it? And I, I, I do. The, the first time we've properly spoken was was this year. Uh, but you've always sent me a um, a birthday message, uh, ah. uh, you know, on my on my birthday, and it's always been like, oh, ah. oh, thank you, oh, thank you. That's the so shameless, it's a nice little bonus. That's the shameless self promotion. Later, yeah, it worked. Later next year, when when Welcome to Flatch comes out, I'm going to send you that that uh, um, um, Godfather scene where it says, uh, "I may." Uh, uh, accept this as a gift on on your birthday, but I may oh. ask you for a service later. And what yes. and what I will ask you to do is go to the Internet Movie Database, IMDb. Familiar with it? Yeah. And, oh, very. Yep. And click on the uh, um, uh, what's now going to be Welcome to Flatch, and scroll mm -hmm. over to my picture and click on it, and you will make me seem like a popular person, <laughs> and then. And then they all Done. may have me back for season two. Excellent. So. Done. I'm on your IMDb right now, actually. Yes. This is a great quid pro quo. Scroll to my images, and the very first image on my IMDb page is a photo of me in a pink bra. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it is. Ah, oh, that's a wonderful sight gag. <laughs> that, that's beautiful. How many, how many of our listeners are going to go there and find out what that is? You need to see it, 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 this, this photo of William in a pink bra. It's important oh. that everybody witnesses. Oh, it's wonderful. William, oh, it's wonderful. In a pink bra. <laughs> no, that's a photo of me in a pink bra. <laughs> It sure is, yeah. Well, I've got to say, your your facial hair is very well kept in that photo of you in the pink bra. Well, it all depends on what film I'm in, because I never mm. cut my hair or trim my beard. Someone from a studio does it. Save a lot of money that way. Uh, uh, well, I was going to say, that's a great perk, isn't it? You know, if nothing else, you're saving money on haircuts. I mean, to be honest... I, I didn't notice the beard. I was looking at the wow. bra, really. John, John Stewart's movie *Irresistible*. They shaved me down to a uh, down to a uh, five o'clock shadow. Oh, oh God! I thought you were going to say something very radically different just then. Uh, but, but I tell you what, I like the way you think. Uh, thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> 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 uh, great. Well, that's. <laughs> So that's been your week. Thank you, um, thank you so much for sharing that, William. It's been it's been it's been truly lovely talking to you. Um, out of a score of whatever, what would you rate this, this week? week? Probably an an eight, eight and a half, eight and a half, eight and a half. Good, Great. good score. That's yeah. a solid week. Yeah, uh, I am. I am. I am so thrilled that you had a good week, and that that, that I'm still jealous of that party because i haven't had a good party in so long even a you know a child's oh, yeah. party just sounds like something really really wonderful helium balloons oh. oh the works yes did you uh did you toke on the balloon <laughs> <laughs> you know i wish i would have now i never thought of it but there's really? always there's always his second birthday Yes. Oh many gosh, more. there's plenty I'm, more. I'm, I'm writing that down right now. Yes. William, what? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, why did I interrupt it? I am right. to talk funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I was going to ask something so mundane, and I, I wrecked your squeaky voice. Um. So, what is the quintessential? child's birthday party food in your part of america so over here traditionally you have um cheese and pineapple hedgehogs Ooh. yeah they're not as um, fancy as they sound they're not actual hedgehogs um sadly that it's just <laughs> little squares of cheese and cubes of pineapple on cocktail sticks and you shove them into a potato gotcha. in the shape of a that's of a, sweet of a, 
<laughs> it's great. <laughs> but do you have an equivalent? We have the birthday cake with a lot of mm-hmm. icing, and, and mm-hmm. you get icing all over them. But normally you have hot dogs and corn dogs. Uh, does the term hot dogs work oh, in the UK? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. We don't really have corn favorites. dogs over here, though. Well, basically what a corn, what these are for kids are little two-inch hot dogs that are in a cornbread mix and sort oh. of fried. So it's basically the whole thing in, in one or two bites. That sounds great. And yeah. I might do that for my next birthday party, uh, inspired by you. Okay. There you go. There you go. So thank um, you. They they do make like a frozen variety um, um, that, you know, you just pop in the oven and warm up. You know? Sure. The little ones for the kids. You know? mm. Yeah. I had a massive one when I went to a baseball game over in America. Uh, and yeah, it was... <laughs> I'm not changing. I, I'm not changing the subject. I'm on about the corn dog, and right. it was, um, yeah, it was. It was hard work to get through it, but yeah, I, <laughs> it's I, I different. It. It's different. I did it. Definitely, definitely. Well, I'm gonna let you go, and thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, it's been an absolute joy, Bill. Uh, it's it really, really has. My pleasure. Thank really, you really so has. much. Did you want to give uh, anything else you wanted to plug? Any, um, any more details about? No. Uh, Welcome to Fletch. It'll probably be out after the first of the year. This trailer that was released, I'm just a glimpse once or twice. No feature. Because like I say, I am what typically would be called a day player, where I just show up and do something. Well, I'm a day player 12 times in a row on their show. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, it's fun. It's Being it's curmudgeonly. Fun. Yeah, uh, well, what it is is I steal scenes. I piss off the other actors. Yeah. I come in there and <laughs> say something cute and, you know, kill Kevin Hart and leave, you know. Yeah. That's the best job. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, it's it, uh, not many people can say they killed Kevin Hart. Mm hmm. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got to ask, what was he like? Actually, he was quite friend- friendly, but the guy that was terrific was Jack Black. I'm sitting in on set holding with Jack Black, uh, Kevin Hart. Uh, the Rock was somewhere else. I don't know. And uh, a young, one of the young kids that played high school walked into the room. And she looked at me, pointed. The little girl said, too many cooks. Jack, uh-huh. jumped, Jack uh-huh. jumped up and said, you son of a bitch. He says, I knew I knew you from somewhere. <laughs> he came over and took a selfie of me and him together. Him taking uh-huh. the selfie, putting it on his Instagram account. So, yeah. Oh, wow. He was fun. What he a man. Fun. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, That's a great awesome. story. Oh, I love it. I mean, I, I, I could literally talk to you for hours, Bill. I really, I'll really come could. back. You better. You better. <laughs> wow. People have got other weeks. <laughs> There's so many other weeks to come. Yeah, I'll have you back anytime, Bill. You've been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, sir. And thank you, thank young you. lady. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm just absolutely over the moon to, to meet you again after our, uh, our music our video. Music video, yeah. Music yeah. video, yeah. yes. The yeah, music exactly. video that I It's been about. too long. <laughs> Don Broncos, everybody. They got to watch it. Let's not leave it so long next time. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Have a, uh, a wonderful day and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so that was that was the week that was, was it? Was it? Uh, it was. And oh. uh, Kate, anything to add? Um, g- go forth and get vaccinated. Good, good. Thank you. Good, solid, do that. Yeah. Get vaccinated, you silly people that aren't being vaccinated. What's wrong with you? <laughs> um, so yes, that has been that was week that was, was it? Uh, I've been Alex Sivright. That was Kate O'Connor. That was William Zakowski. And thank you so much. See you next time. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Have you got a song stuck in your head? Then come to Earworms Be Gone. We will exterminate all earworms using our highly toxic poison that we will pour directly into your ear. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Earworms Be Gone, for when too many cooks is just repeating too many times. <laughs>